Outside the reaches of Bistro, hidden within the depths of the forest, an ancient sect of elves guides in seclusion, speaking in a tongue known only to them and avoiding contact with other races. In their journey, the Arisen will navigate through conflicts between species and the complexities of culture, faith, and history in each land. The choices the Arisen makes shape not only their future, that of those with whom they interact, but the future of the world itself. The Arisen's Odyssey is fraught with peril, for the world is home not only to human and beastmen, but to all manner of monsters, hungering to defeat the hero and their pawn. Each step of the way is marked with blood and sweat, dead in the face of relentless adversaries. Hurrying shrieks of harpies reverberate through the mountains and canyons. Resourceful goblins lurk in the shadows, skillfully adapting to the terrain and waiting to ambush in groups. Footsteps of lumbering golems, animated by powerful charms, shake the earth from the arisen's bone. And when the sun sets, again, we can expect a busy night. Skeletons, ghosts. Undead rise from their slumber. A single undead, murmuring to itself a drift in memories of its living past, is a haunting sight. But a horde of undead, united in a mindless nocturnal frenzy, is a truly nightmarish test of metal. The mightiest foes are monsters most only see in myth. The Minotaur's trampling hooves. The Medusa with its petrifying gaze. And the Dullahan's ghastly severed head will strike fear in even the most stout-hearted. And with every exhilarating encounter, the hero must think creatively. It will take cleverness, as well as courage, to conquer the three heads of the Chimera. Play the soaring griffin and overpower the bronze giant, Alice. Each victory emboldens the arisen spirit and prepares them for the inevitable showdown with the indomitable dragon. The culmination of both their destinies. Welcome. The Dragon's Dogma. Hmm. Interesting. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Oh, am I getting an echo? What is going on? No, I'm not getting an echo. How are you guys doing? What's going on? So weird. Sometimes I feel like I'm hearing an echo, and then I realize it's that I can hear myself outside of my headphones. What's going on, guys? Hope you're doing well. So it is Sunday, a day that I am not normally here, but um, I'm here. <laughs> this is uh, this is gonna be a a little bit of a different kind of stream. I I really want to play these two games that have come out. Uh, the first one is Dragon's Dogma Two, which you are able to see here. Uh, I'm gonna lower down the volume for a second there, and um, you know, there's a I've been looking at it for a while. I'm very interested in it. But what I've been hearing a lot is there seems to be performance issues. And, you know, it would really suck to play this and then have, like, performance issues where it's all grainy. I mean, I remember days where I would stream a game and it was, um, you know, on my side it looked okay. But then as it streamed through, it was really bad. So I can imagine if it's going to look bad on both sides. I don't know. Uh, I have been seeing some people play it, and it looks uh, it looks all right. I haven't seen any problems, but I don't know what their setup is. Now I'll have to look at the um, I'll have to look at the specs. But for me, 
I'm running, yeah, microtrade. We're going to get to that. What's up, Brink? What's going on, man? Um, for me, I'm running a 40, 4070 Ti. Is it a 4070? I think it is. It's a 4070 Ti, 64 gives you RAM on the regular machine. Uh, so I, I should be fine. It's an NVIDIA card, so I should be good. But for some reason, I've been hearing that, yeah, there's like performance issues. Like it drops down to like 30 frames per second or something. So that's kind of a bummer. Now, the other thing about this game is that, yes, there is a lot of, there, there's definitely microtransactions. So uh, I don't know how I feel about that at this point, but it is a single player game. So if it's a single player game, it really shouldn't matter. I mean, that kind of stuff. Uh, I don't know if there's any player versus player in it or anything like that. I don't know if there's any co oping I haven't really, I haven't played this game at all. And I've just been watching some videos. That's about it. But what we're going to do is we're going to look at a before you buy video so that we can kind of get it. It's a pass for you. Yeah. You know, some people have been saying that. So I'm trying to figure out why it's a pass for some people. Like, why did you say it's a pass for you? What is it about the game that makes it like, yeah, no. Now, I have to say, when I look at this game, it reminds me of Dragon Age. But of course, without the stopping. And it also reminds me of EverQuest 2 for some reason. So I kind of like the look of it. So we're going to see what this is about. Um, all right, I'm just watching. This is on Steam, and this was just pre-recorded footage. Uh, we're not going to watch this part of it. I'm just going to go ahead and get it out of this. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. Now, one of the things that I should mention is if I looked at mixed reviews, uh, there, I mean, all of them say something about performance. This is what is today, 24th. So these were posted yesterday on the 23rd. The game itself is fantastic, but I cannot recommend it given the huge performance issues. Wait and see if they fix it before you buy. And then it also says here, I was fully intent on refunding the game if it ran like crap, but as it turns out, I'm one of the lucky ones who can say it runs good enough. On my machine, uh, 60 frames per second in the wilderness, shaky 30 frames per second in the city. But the game itself is phenomenal and it hooked me instantly. Hmm. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay, let me read this other one down here. Absolutely. Oh, hold on, son. Let me read this rest of this. I absolutely cannot recommend this game at the moment with the state of it's in. PC players didn't build PCs to play a game at console quality. See, that's it. I could buy for PlayStation Five though. Um, there's no reason why I shouldn't. I shouldn't be getting 120 frames per second across the board with my graphics setting. It's not great looking game. It's just fine. Okay. Um. NPCs wreck performance due to big CPU load from what I've heard. Uh, what's my CPU? Well, I've got a, um, what do I have? I an i7 12th generation. Yeah, I don't know. i7 12th generation. That's what I got. Let me see. I forget which machine I'm on. Yeah, here it is. 127, okay, uh, 12,700 12, KF, 3,600 megahertz, 12 cores. That's what I got. Should be 64 megs of RAM, and it's a... It's a, a 4070 Ti. I should be fine. I mean, I think it should be okay. But that's kind of what I've been hearing. All right, let me see. Let's go over here. Uh, first of all, let's let's look at some videos from. Where is it? Where is it? Some videos we're going to look at later. <laughs> all right, let's look at our buddy Asma and see what he's talking about. Okay, and then vertical position. I move up. There it is. There's a fucking champion right there. That's pretty cool that he made his, his character look like him, though. <laughs> it does look like him. Come on, it does. Fuck That's yes. <laughs> I'm like, 
<laughs> oh no! I didn't know he was gonna run like this. Oh my god! That's pretty bad. Oh, that's pretty bad. It looks just like him, though. <laughs> it looks just like it's him. Like a YouTube thumbnail. I wonder if the devs, when they were making it, knew that he would be playing and say, we gotta make it so that he can make his character look like him. I'm pretty sure that's what they did. Gentlemen. He's here. You guys ready? <laughs> oh, my Oh, he God. made, and he makes a McConnell? No. Oh, that's right. They're NPCs that follow you. Oh my oh God! My. Wow. Can you have sex with pawns? They're pawns. That's right. Okay, let me see this other one. Hold on. There was another one I wanted to watch. Oh no, I lost it. Hold on. I hate when I do okay. it, it. Like refreshes. As in vertical position. Let me see. Maybe it was at the end of this one. Here it is. Here it is. Okay, this one. Oh shit! Sure. Cortis wait, courtesans please various tastes can be found on every floor. Wait, what the what the fuck? Twenty thousand gold. Get the fuck out of here. Of course I'm gonna do it. Oh, they have they have services. Those type of services. He doesn't know. What the hell is this? Ah. I thought he was like the I thought I would pay him the money and then I could go in and take out one of the girls. I didn't realize that. Yeah, I thought he was the receptionist. Press the save files and now this. Ah. <laughs> That's pretty funny. That's pretty bad, man. Oh my god. Okay. Oh man, okay. Whoa. <laughs> That's pretty messed up. All right, anyway, so what I want to do is <laughs> jeez, I could watch I could watch Asmund's freaking videos all day long. Oh, he's been playing for a while. He's not like on episode four came up already. He's this is like how long is that? Uh seven hours. Yeah, we're not gonna watch that. So let's let's look at this video first. It should be okay on my CPU, but it still lags around. Lots of NPCs. Hmm, we're gonna have to see. I mean, it's, it's, I could wait. It's, it's freaking, it's a $70 game. I mean, I could wait and see when it goes on sale. And I also want to play uh, Rise of the Ronin. So we got to look at that one too. All right. So let's look at a look at this before you buy. In it, it's Dragon's Dogma 2. Against all, oh. back to another episode of Before You Buy, the show where we give you some straight up gameplay and our first impressions of the latest games releasing. Just a few years ago, I'd have told you this isn't going to happen, but it's here. I'm playing it. It's Dragon's Dogma 2 against. So well, my understanding is there's like four NPCs that follow you. Three or four. I think it's, I think it's four. Maybe it's only three. But um, they're like uh, basically like your, your pawns, supposedly. It's all odds. The original game from 2012 is a deeply weird, kind of janky experience that was begging for a more refined follow-up that never really materialized until now, almost 12 years later. Capcom could have easily taken the safer route. I never played the first one. And I did see the first one, and it doesn't look like something I would want to play. For whatever reason, I, I looked at it and I was like, yeah, no, I don't think I would ever play that. I just, it didn't, it didn't look right. The movement was, I don't know. I just did not like it. So I never played the first one. This one kind of looks good. I mean, I don't... There's things about it that I like. And turn this into a medieval fantasy we'll game, have to monster see. hunter game. But instead, they made a relentlessly faithful follow-up to the original that is still a little weird and a little janky, but utterly enthralling. It is not a perfect game, but Dragon's Dogma 2 is one of the most intriguing and exciting AAA games I have played in a very long time. Now, a lot of people were looking forward to this game. Uh, there's also a big save file problem, but I forgot the specifics. Uh, well, I do know that there's only one save file. There's not like multiple saves. There's just one save file. And I'm sure that's, that's the, what's one of the biggest issues. 
Yeah, I, I'm thinking I'm gonna wait on it, but let's let's see what else they say about it. I'm I'm really curious. By the way, welcome. I'm glad I'm back. I just have to say I'm back at home. I'm back in my office. Uh, it's a little bit of messy back there. If you can see, I got I got a bunch of uh, boxes and crates and whatnot hanging out of my desk back there. I need to put that away. And then I also need to get my PlayStation back and put it over there in the corner. So it still needs to go put back there. So I'm still working on getting the room tidied up. But I did say I would stream today uh, because it's been a while. So I decided, let me just jump on stream. We're going to review these videos that I was going to watch anyways. And then we can see if I'm even going to get this game now. But I am honestly leaning towards waiting. This is a wait. This is not a buy now. And kind of see how it's going. Uh, there is... We're going to watch also the Rise of the Ronin. I want to see what you guys think about that. We're going to look at the weather, you know, before you buy video on that one. Uh, that will be a PlayStation 5 game, so that will be interesting. Um, really looking forward to that one. I'm, I'm big on the samurai kind of storylines. So the other than that, today we're also going to talk a little bit about the Scum Coins Quest. Not going to get into it yet, but we'll be talking about that a little bit. That will be interesting. Uh, by the way, I did buy the final, um, the last Epoch. I keep calling it the final Epoch, but I think I, I, I bought the, um, let me see, where is that again? Hold on one second. Is it the last? It's up here somewhere, because I know I downloaded it. There it is, last Epoch. I did buy this, so I do want to play this. I have not launched this yet, so I'm, I'm going to play. We're going to see what it's like, if we like it. We'll put it into the rotation. Uh, we bought that and we bought something else. Obviously, we're playing a Deep Rock Galactic Survivor, but that's I've been playing that off screen. They got an update, though. So anyways, so we're going to be doing that. For sure. So we'll get to that. Anyhow, let's see what else is going on here. There are things about this game that some people are going to hate for sure. Uh, it's got some obtuse quests, some pretty oddball gameplay systems that go relatively unexplained, uh, some inconsistent frame rate, and extremely low-key opening hours. But in a lot of ways, this is kind of the anti-AAA. It zigs where most games zag. And while that may be disorienting for some out there, I'm going to say I really like it. So They have some really good cinematics, so it looks like a movie. I mean, I'm not going to say the quality is like a movie, but they, they do fill in the storyline with some cinematics. I know that one. So what the hell even is this game? Yeah, that's a good question. Let's see. What the hell even is this game? It's hard to explain if you haven't played the first one. I have not. If you have, it's like that. It's an action RPG where you make your character pick a class and explore a big open world. On the most basic level, it sounds indistinguishable from most high-profile action RPGs, but this game, it's really not exactly like anything else out there. Um, the combat's a little like Monster Hunter, where a lot of the beasts you take on are these gigantic enemies that you can climb on target weak points, et cetera, et cetera. But instead of going it alone or with a party of other players, Dragon's Dogma has you team up with three pawns. These are Ah, so it's three of them. Okay. I never played Monster Hunter. I actually, no, 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 correction. I did play it. I played it for a day, for a couple of hours. I did not like it. Got rid of the game. I took it, I took it back to GameStop. At the time, I was buying games from GameStop. I did take it back. Be right back. Hey, what's up, Guino? AI controlled allies that have their own complex rules governing their behavior. There is mm. no multiplayer in this game. So if that's what you're looking for, you're not going to find it. Um, okay, I would so argue it's... there's plenty of other things to look Solo for, game. though. Uh, there's the quests, which tend to be very open ended, uh, and the extremely systematic game world with day and night cycles and NPCs with schedules. It's sort of like Monster Hunter had a weird baby with Skyrim. But I, I don't know that that accurately captures how odd this game is. It's one of those things where you just have to play it or at least see it for a while to get what's really going on. Unlike the first game, which took way too long to get you into the open world, this one starts with a short prologue where you create your character using the game's, frankly, really impressive character creation tool. No, I, and I, then, did, I did hear that the character creation is really good. I mean, it's like very detailed. I wonder if I can make myself pretty well drops you into the game if you so desire spanish looking asian guy i mean i can i can I, I think they should have a default character for that right i mean it should that should be easy to make you know medium build 
tire, you can totally ignore the main quest and start exploring in random directions. It's up to you. As an example of just how open this game can be, there's a quest where this soldier is escorting you back to the capital. In any other game, this would be some scripted thing where you're forced to follow this guy. But there's nothing stopping you from going off the beaten path and getting him killed by mistake. And if you... <laughs> nice. Uh, go play Conan instead. Oh, man. There, it, it's, well, there's no comparison. Is it a different... Fail the quest, there's no restarting. You just have to make your way to the capital on your own. Later on, there's a gate that keeps you from entering a southern section of the map. In any other game, this would be locked by plot progression, but in Dragon's Dogma 2, there's other ways of getting past. There's just a level of freedom you rarely see in a game that is on this scale. There's multiple ways to resolve quests. You can access certain locations earlier than you're supposed to. You can kill plot critical characters and everything just keeps going the actual presentation on all this stuff isn't always that impressive to be fair uh there are a few full cutscenes, um but your character is a classic mute rpg protagonist and most of the dialogue is done through basic text you know the old text box that's the one thing that bugs me is the the way the text is i don't know if i can it's it's really like it looks messy like i don't think i'd be able to like be reading that it looks very like like messy to me. Yeah, Monster Hunter's combat looked dumb to you. Yeah, it it it's it seems kind of stupid to me. I mean, if it wasn't my style, I, I'm not gonna say it was stupid, but it just wasn't my style. And you you definitely had like huge freaking weapons, and you had to. Okay, let's see. It reminds me of in Elden Ring when you play when you're trying to kill the Death Bird, which is this big giant bird, but you have to hit it in the face. So you have to wait till it comes down in order for you to hit it. I think all the monsters are kind of that way. It's like you have to like hit in a certain spot to be like to get the weak point. I don't know. It just it just wasn't my thing. And the other thing I didn't like about Monster Hunter is having to go back like and um, load load up on certain things on your inventory. And then you had to like have that little cat chef cook your meal and eat that meal and so forth. I don't know. It was a little it felt like there were other little games within the game. It just didn't didn't feel right to me and i hate to say it and people are going to get mad that i that i'm saying monster hunter this was this way but it made me feel like it was like pokemon style in a sense i don't know why it just did but it, i mean for some it's not a, that it's a bad game it just wasn't my style that's all that lady head is so tiny <laughs> yeah, i think they made her that way so this text and, is bad. Uh, characters just standing somewhere, you know. It's functional, but pretty bare bones compared to the presentation in a lot of other modern RPGs. The game is just really unusual in that most of the main quests are pretty flat and simple. Go here and get that sort of things. Rarely does a main quest even directly force you into a fight. Most of the combat in this game is incidental to exploring rather than a driving force of the story. Um, so basically, the quests are just, hey, here's a quest. If you feel like doing it, go and do it while you're exploring, but the quests are kind of meaningless and you don't have to finish them. And the fights that you get into are really just, I came across something and I started fighting or it attacked me. Interesting. So there's no real like point to the game is just go out there and have a good time. It's not like Monster Hunter where every main quest is to hunt a new monster. It's more like you're going somewhere and there just so happens to be a monster in your way. Side quests can be a little more complex with multiple possible outcomes depending on what you decide to do. This game never gives you a Bethesda-style drop-down list of choices. The things you do are entirely up to you, and it's both liberating and potentially frustrating depending on exactly how you jive with it. For an example of what I'm talking about, there's a quest called Hunt for the Jadeite Orb, where a guy had this orb stolen from I mean, he had an orb, and somebody took the orb. There's two guys who want it, and you can just find the orb and hand it over to either of them if you want. But if you really want to resolve the quest in the best way, you go to the local item forger and get a duplicate made of the orb, and you give the crappy one to the jerk and the real one to the nice guy, and oh. you get a better reward. Oh None of God. how this plays out is signposted or explained other than the general quest area where these guys appear. Um, Beyond that, it just leaves you up to figure this stuff out, and when you do, it feels awesome. I it's it, I'm starting to understand that this game is like a an open ended sandbox. Like you can you can play the game however you want, and then there's going to be some uh, microtransactions. But it, there's like no no clear way to play it. Like there's no you don't have to follow any rules or any any 
quest line or anything like that. You just play. Have fun. Here it is. Now, here's this weird. It's like we all love to have quests, but we want quests to be. Hold on a second. There we go. Sorry, I had to turn my camera off. Um, you know, I was doing the moving thing. We want to have quests in the game. But we want the quest to mean something, and we want to have some kind of direction in the game. And I think this game has no direction. It's just like, just go out and, and explore and get in trouble and pick up quests if you want and do whatever you want. It is a single-player game, so maybe that's what it is. The characters look goofy. Hmm. I don't know. Uh, this review is not helping. Let's see. I really like knowing that everybody is satisfied with their orb. Even though one of the orbs is clearly inferior, they don't know that. And I don't have to stick around to find out if anybody gets orb regret. I just move right on. The game does have a few systems to help you out, though, like the pawns, for example, who, depending on their experience, may be able to guide you during a certain quest. But that usually just boils down to taking you to a specific place, and I mean, that's it. This can be extremely helpful during certain quests, don't get me wrong, but they're not going to explain any fine details of anything for you. There's also an oracle who is about equally as helpful, uh, and when I say that, what I mean is not that helpful. On the sub, <laughs> There's an oracle, but she's not very helpful. The shoes is there. I mean, they have a lot of really good things in the game. I just think it it probably just I don't know, it just feels like a sandbox. Now I'm kind of like I'm glad I'm watching this video before I, I bought it because I don't want to spend 70 bucks and then be upset. Be like, damn, this is just mm. I, I wanna wait. I think I'm I'm definitely gonna wait till it's uh till it goes on sale. Objective pawns, yes. They're better than they were in the first game. And yes, they don't talk as much. They still talk too much and repeat certain lines a lot. Like, do you really need to point out that same ladder every time I pass by it? I don't think you do. But overall, again, they talk a lot less and act more intelligently in battle. Pawns are what make comp. They talk a lot more than the, the people from Baldur's Gate. And I think it's going to be way too much talking to be like, all right, you guys need to shut up. <laughs> I'm trying to concentrate here. That in Dragon's Dogma feel unlike any other RPG because you're rolling with a team of three AI assistants that can only be given four vague commands like come here and help, which might make them sound kind of mm. worthless. But if you built a solid team, they can practically win battles for you. You can obtain pawns from these rift stones. There's one main pawn you design yourself, and then you can bring along two guest pawns, which are the ones you obtain by using rift stones and spending in game currency called rift crystals. That's what you can buy more of. So I did see the store, and the store allows you to buy more crystals. So you can like have these. You can buy these crystals for like two ninety nine or four ninety nine, something like that. We'll look at it later. But yeah, there are definitely you can buy those crystals offline. That's how they make their money. Pawns on your own level are always free, um, but higher level pawns cost more. And depending on your settings, the ones you see in the Rift will either be pawns created by other players or pawns created by Capcom. There's a whole lot to talk about here with these things, how they work, what they do. But I'm going to give you the short version here and say that they work. They work really well, actually. And while you'll be swapping out guest pawns a lot because they can't gain experience in your world, finding new and better pawns is always satisfying. Another thing I appreciate is sur there's surprisingly not that much menu busy work in this game. Mm. There's basic crafting, but you're only making a few specific items. There's skills and different jobs to unlock, but those are only accessed at certain vendors. And while there's a lot of different armor and sets of weapons to find, there's no randomization on stats or anything. It's not a loot game. You're only getting so much stuff, and it's a big relief. So most of your time... Still trying to understand what the point is. <laughs> really. Play, play to win in a single player game. I know, right? This is what I don't understand. Why is there microtransactions for a single player game? It's like, hey, 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 you know, you don't, it's, it's not, usually you get microtransactions because you want to show off your stuff, like getting better gear, you know, buying a certain, certain type of look, whatever, or maybe just having a bunch of money you can spend on buying things that other people are selling. So you get to show off a little bit with your money, right? But spending money, on a single player game where no one's going to see your achievements or what you spend your money on, what really is the point? It doesn't make any sense. That's really weird. 
I mean, there should, should be a God mode that allows you to like give yourself a bunch of freaking coins because why not? Why do we have to pay for them? It's a single player game. That doesn't make sense to me. Now I'm, I'm trying to think about this. It's like, so you can, you can buy more money in the game to, for the game to be able to buy things in the game. Why not just give you God mode and let you give yourself as much freaking riff or whatever they're called items. Hey, to skip. <laughs> exactly. A single player game is just laziness. Exactly. It's a sandbox <laughs> with microtransactions. Oh, man. And get this is spent doing the actual big relief. So most of your time, get this is spent doing the actual fun parts of an RPG, fighting monsters and exploring the world. There's a lot to explore in this game, too. The world map is very, very large, full of little secrets and tons of unique little things, too. They so, yeah, so the, the point of the game is really explore. Explore and get into fights. That's what the game is about. But in order to get stronger pawns, and like you'll find pawns, pawns are the, uh, your NPCs that follow you, in order to get better ones, you have to spend, you have to have the amount of coins, whatever the hell the coins are called, in order to pay them. And in order, and you probably have to pay them more in order to up, like up, upgrade them or something. Who knows? So that's what the money's for. Hmm. Really put a lot of effort into making this an enjoyable world just to be in. Um, it's dense without resorting to covering the map in Ubisoft style icons. So a lot of what you end up doing feels natural because you're the one who found it. You're not just marking objectives off a checklist. You're doing things because you want to do them. At least that's what I assume. Maybe there's something wrong with you. I don't know. But yeah. And there's tons of cool stuff to find. I haven't played a game that rewards your curiosity like this since Elden Ring. Like, there's some really, really crazy stuff tucked away in the corners of this world. And, yeah, while you're wandering around, you are going to deal with a pretty constant onslaught of enemies. Mostly some combination of wolves, goblins, bandits, harpies, with a random giant monster thrown in a good measure, like a cyclops or a griffin. Uh, the world is just dense with enemies and ambushes, so it can get a little exhausting after a while. I'm not going to say it can't. It'd be a bigger issue if the combat wasn't so damn good and and make no mistake it's very good no matter whether you're playing as a warrior an archer a thief or mage or one of the more exotic hybrid classes you're gonna have a ton of tools to work with wonder but what's the progression because i know there's levels so you do level up but there is no progression in the game how big is this map i wonder if i can see the map i'm gonna have to look it up after this Every class has a few basic attacks, but the many special moves you can unlock really change how your character works. As you rank up your class, you unlock flashier and more over-the-top abilities, and it really works well. One important thing to keep in mind is that if there's one thing this game isn't, it's Dark Souls. There's no dodge button by default and <gasps> no lock dodge. On. So how no you roll? end up playing is pretty fundamentally different. You can climb on top of monsters to stab them or grab their legs and push them over. Everything's fully affected by physics, which can sometimes work out in your favor and sometimes really work against you. Battles can be chaotic and crazy. The terrain you're fighting on can make a huge difference in battle. As you explore and fight monsters, your overall health slowly drains from scratch damage, and the only way to heal it is to rest at an inn or make camp. The addition of camping also makes Dragon's Dog oh my an obvious pick over the original. Um... You're no longer forced to wander around in the pitch black night, and it doesn't just restore your health without having to take a lengthy trip back to town for an inn. Uh, it does other stuff. You got the prerequisite cooking menu, only oh this God. time you're cooking real meat. It's such an odd but Ooh, look at that. You're going to make all the cooking cutscenes full motion video, like actual. Okay, okay. So why did they do this? This is actual real meat. This game is odd, man. Cool video footage of cooking of meat. It's another way this game is just doing its own thing. And there's a lot of combat. That's so uh, because weird. Because there is a lot of wandering around. There's very... Okay. I, I think I got enough to understand what it is. And there's nothing saying here not to buy it. I mean, it's just letting you know what the game's like. Um, let me... I'd like to see some Asmund Gold gaming here. Let me see if I can do that real quick. Let's open this up here. 
So it's it, there's a lot of just kind of like um, explore and get into fights. What's going on? Hi, hi, how's it going? ASMR close up meat cooking scene. I know that's kind of weird. All right, hold on. Let's let's see a little gameplay from Asmin, and uh, I'm just gonna skip to a random place here and just see see some 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 playing. This is a good random spot right here. Okay. All right. See, the game looks good, but it has no direction. It's just basically go out and explore anything, anything and worthwhile. get into trouble. Any ideas as to how we might reach? It's a, the freaking the NPCs that follow you the whole time, they're talking constantly. Oh, wow, there's another cave here. I brought you boring things. Oh, somebody fell. Damn, these things are annoying. The, the combat seems a little bit like, I don't know, janky? It doesn't... Not sure. Like, one thing I, I wish this game had is Ooh, level up. damage nice. numbers. Because sometimes it's hard for me to know, like, how much damage I'm doing. Like, if I'm making a good decision by, like, using an item or not. Yeah, it has no damage numbers. I noticed that. Uh, let's see. Let's see him get into some other trouble with something else. Oh, here's the inventory. Let me see. I just want to see that. Um, all right, right here. What's the pay to win camp? Hmm. Is he buying all this? Explorers kit? Okay. Oh, is he deposit? It's a deposit. Damn, there's a lot of stuff. These are all like ingredients or something. Oh my god. Can't you just select them all? Oh man. A lot of management there. Okay. If I want a chatty NPC to play with, I'd play with Nord. Nice. That's right. I'd be the chatty Kathy. Looks like enshrouded. Uh, not exactly. I think enshrouded's a little bit more polished. I mean, it looks different. It's not as real looking, but at least you got a role in that one. And there is a direction in that game. Like you have to do things in kind of a sequence order. Kind of. Kind of. Not really. You going on a plane trip? Nice. Going on a trip. In her favorite rocket ship. Nice. Airport at seven. Oh, well, it's six now. Maybe seven your time? I don't talk that much. God, you guys are like, I talk a lot. I'm not that much of a chatty Kathy, am I? When I play games, am I? Maybe I am. Great. Anyways, I think I'm going to wait till this game goes on sale. Uh, this is a freaking seven or eight hour. Yeah, seven hour freaking stream that he did on that so i'm i'm really not gonna watch this right now I'll probably watch that before i go to bed or something this is not my jam will not be buying yeah i'm gonna wait if it goes on sale to something decent that i can just throw the money at it and not worry about it then i'll probably do that but other than that yeah i don't think I'll, i'm not not gonna be going that way so let's talk about this one this is a rise of the ronin I don't know if you guys have uh, have ex have looked into this one at all, but I think it's worth it, even though I haven't seen a lot of it. Anything to do with the samurai sword? Come on, you got to be in. You got to. 
let's take a look at this one uh first off 15 things you should know before you purchase uh how long is this one this one is eight minutes this one's third let's do this one do somebody different because we watched this guy's other video so let's take a look at this one right here open please okay rise of the ronin this is a i believe this is a playstation exclusive if i'm not if i'm not mistaken playstation exclusive rise of the ronin for those of you that have not played ghost of toshima this is a good game i've been wanting to go back to that so if i play this it's going to be on my playstation i'll be doing full controller on this i i am 75 percent sure right now that i'm going to get this even before watching this video so let's take a look Seventy-five percent. With sure. Helldivers two and Final Fantasy seven Rebirth providing a memorable February for PS five players, it's now Team Ninja's turn with Rise of the Ronin. Launching on March twenty second for PS five, the open world action RPG has seen seven years of development and is the team's biggest title yet. It's set in Japan during the later years of the Bakumatsu era, with the Shogunate in upheaval and foreign powers looking to make their mark. As a veiled edge free to make their way, your actions could dictate the flow of history. So here are 15 things about Rise of the Ronin, including how its combat works. Did he just do a, a Mortal Kombat move right there? Like, come here. Let me go back a little bit. Nice. Major cities and areas. Players will explore three major cities, Yokohama, Kyoto, and Edo, which would become Tokyo. Each has unique sites and locations to explore, from the foreign settlement in Yamashita, Yokohama, where soldiers from other countries are stationed, to Chinatown with various trinkets for sale and unique architecture characteristics of Chinese cultures. Kyoto has the Gosho District, where the Emperor's Palace resides, and you can even venture to the Shinsegumi's training ground. Edo is the base of the Shogunate, with the Kojimachi district full of samurai that protect the castle. Of course, you can also visit Nihonbashi, a famous bridge over the titular river, which has become a modern tourist attraction. The countryside is open, with threats like bandits about, but the city should make for the most intriguing locations. Combat. Those versed in Neo- Okay, this is a very quick, like, cut through- We'll come back to this one. Let me let me go see that other one. I, I kind of like that guy's style too. This guy here. What's his name again? Game ranks? Yeah. All right, let's watch him. It's a longer video, but let me just... And we're back with another episode of Before You Buy. That show will give you some straight up gameplay and our first impressions of the latest games releasing. As usual, it's me, Jake Baldino, and today we're talking about Jake. Rise of the Ronin. This is the newest game from Team Ninja, the folks behind so many games. Uh, more recently, Neo 1 and 2 and uh, Wo Long Fallen Dynasty. Uh, they've kind of... Oh, they... Oh, the people behind Neo 1 and 2. Now, Super was a big fan of those games. He liked those games. I think I... I don't... I have them, but I don't think I played them. What's up, Guido? Welcome back. Taken things they've learned from those games and set their ambitions on an open world adventure in a cool oh. historic setting. And while Rise of the Ronin is definitely almost clearly flawed. I want to make sure that it's not like Sekiro because I couldn't get past certain bosses in Sekiro. I was very disappointed. It was very difficult for me. Oh. And while Rise of the Ronin is definitely almost clearly flawed oh great did he say it's flawed damn it i'm looking forward to this game so far i've been having a lot of fun with this one there's a lot to it, a lot to explain and break down. So uh, before we do get into it, just the usual disclaimers. We've been playing a review copy on PS5. That's where this footage is captured and it's running in performance mode. And this video is spoiler free, so okay. don't worry. Now, I mentioned flaws right at the start, but to be completely honest, the elevator pitch cuts through a lot of that. Uh, Wolong or Neo meets Ghost of Tsushima's open world just mm. different time period basically a vast open world adventure with team ninja's brand of spin-off souls like combat but in a big world filled with quests side quests loot hidden things 
collectible cats, towns, NPCs, and cool traversal. I think for some people, that's all they really needed to hear. And I think the game totally nails that premise, at least. This game is messy, and it throws the kitchen sink at you. So hold on a second, because I'm looking at the fighting, and it looks pretty straightforward, like just jump in. Okay, so this is Ghost of Toshima, which I really like this game. But this game, you took your time in fighting, like, the moves that you made. It wasn't just rush, rush, rush. However, at least that's how I played. So let's see. Let me see how this guy played. No such thing as a perfect game. Every game is flawed. Well, to a certain extent, I guess. Okay, watch. Let's see. See, now, look at the difference. This is Ghost of Toshima, PS5, just like the other one. You see a little strategy there? Okay. Somebody helped him out, I think. I have to play this again. Nice. Think very precise movements. Because see, as a samurai, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. When you played as a samurai, it's like you just had to do certain quick moves and, you know, the, the less moves, the better. So it wasn't like you were like in there sword fighting like you were an English uh, knight or anything like that. But, you know, that, I'm sure there are times you have to throw down, but let me take a look. So there's so many little tools you can use. So this is why I like this game. There was so much to do. And see how he takes his time in the, in the fights? Really well done. Okay. So that's how gameplay and fighting combat is in Ghost of Tsushima. Let me see. Let me just move forward a little bit. I want to see if there's another fight. And then we'll move back. All right, here's another, here's another one. See that? He waited last minute. Boom. Nice special moves. Well done. Damn. See, it's it's totally different. All right, so I just wanted to show you that. So that's Ghost of Tsushima. So back to Rise of the Ronin. So if I go, oh, I gotta keep. I make sure I didn't move my camera. My camera keeps like trying to move. Sorry, I'm not wearing my hat today. So my um freaking headset set feels like it's falling all the time. All right, so back to this. I watched this combat. Combat. Those versed in Neo and Wolong Fallen Dynasty know the... Dr oh, wait, 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 wrong guy, wrong guy. Sorry, sorry. Go back here. So watch, when we watch this guy doing combat here... Hidden things, collectible cats, towns, NPCs, and cool traversal. I think for some people, that's all they really needed to hear. And I think the game totally nails that premise, at least. This game is it's messy, and it throws the kitchen sink at you. Systems, skill trees, weapons, alliances, character bonds, a ton of stuff. I'm going to try and break down at least most of it. Some of those systems are better than others, uh, you know, where one area might falter, another might totally kick ass. But uh, combat is the main gist of the game. There's a okay, lot see, of look it, at this fight. And that is a lot of fun. So you have multiple weapon types to take advantage of and hone and develop, like maybe one katana, two swords. You longer weapons, heavier weapons, uh, ranged weapons, guns, bows and arrows, pistols, all of them having their own move sets and uh, animations and capabilities. Now, as you progress, you unlock multiple different swappable stances. I'm not, I'm, I'm not digging it. 
I'm looking at this and, and I really am going back to this here. Let me just lower the volume down. It's just a, to it's a totally different game. This looks so much better. And it just seems like it's like the, the, the combat is just paced a lot better. Like you take your time, the movements look good. I don't know, man. I think I'm going to be disappointed. I was really looking forward to one of these, at least one of these. Yeah, you got to unlock stances. Yeah, I know, but the look of it is just not. All right, let's let's go back. To take advantage of with melee weapons, uh, each of them with their own little differences and speeds, and they tend to have different advantages over different enemies. You have a dodge, a roll, a block, and a special parry deflect mapped to triangle that you're going to need to learn to get the hang of really quickly. Now, if you've played any of these types of games, you know that there's a big attack with a red flash that indicates like the only way to defend it is to do this special parry. Uh, and if you miss it, you'll just get like your ass completely beat. Uh, so mm, you deflect nice. those attacks and regular attacks more and more to weaken your enemies meter to open them up for a big attack. You also have your own meter to worry about uh, from blocking, striking, and uh, burning it on special attacks you unlock mapped to holding a trigger and pressing a button. Now you unlock all kinds of these attacks as you go. And then once you get into the skill tree that I'll try to explain in a little bit, there's more depth to the combat. Like you're unlocking stuff like shooting while dodging backwards, jumping on enemies, using a grappling hook on them, throwing shit at them, and a lot more I won't spoil but there's a staggering amount of stuff to the combat. Even when it boils down to just like whack, 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 like there's so much more around those simple combos. And even without a lot of that stuff, the combat is still a lot of fun. Like there's a lot of back and forth sword clashes that just feel really satisfying when you nail it, like a good ping, ping, you know, there, there's enough enemy variety to keep things interesting and finishing enemies off always feels so awesome. The game has really satisfied. It, it doesn't, it, I don't know. I'm not liking, I'm looking at the combat. I'm like, okay, so there's, there's three other guys there and all, and you're like focusing on this one guy. The other guys are just standing around. Then again, it could be, this could be like a quest or something. I don't know. It just doesn't feel right to me. I'm looking at this and I'm just kind of like, I keep going back to Ghost of Tsushima. By the way, did you know that they are actually releasing a Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut or actually for PC. It's coming in May. I mean, this game is beautiful. Listen, if you like any type of samurai and open world, this you definitely got to get this. In fact, I might just play this this week instead of buying these other games because I mean, I'm not really, I'm not, I'm telling you, I'm like a third of the way there but not really. We might have to play this. It's a beautiful looking game. Yeah, I'll call another wait for sale. Yeah, that's, I believe so. All right, well, I'm not gonna watch the rest Bye. of this, but what I'm gonna do is I'll make sure that I put these links to both these reviews in the, uh, in the description. So in case you guys wanna watch these reviews, that's fine. But yeah, it's definitely something that I should just wait. Come play Conan. <laughs> Well, I got to make dinner a little bit, so I can't really play anything right now. So this is why it's not a let's play. It's a coffee chat. Otherwise, I would have done a let's play uh, a stream instead. So I think I'm going to do a, another wait on this one. That's going to wait till they're going to go on sale. Because right now, both of them are about $70. Yeah, they're both 70 bucks. And I honestly, I honestly don't feel like spending 70 bucks on a game I'm not 100% on. Yeah, I don't think so. My hair's standing up now. Yeah, sorry. It just doesn't, doesn't seem. It's not going to do it for me. Conan has katanas. Nice. Yeah, uh, Koshima, Ghost of Tsushima is definitely good. It looks good. You'll, you'll like it. Do you have delivery? There's no excuse. 
No, man. After being on vacation for a while, my par my my parents, my family, my parents, my family wants a a home cooked meal. So I gotta I gotta I gotta do that. In fact, we're actually, it's not gonna be too crazy. We're having tacos tonight. So maybe who knows if I'll stay up. Maybe we'll play something. If you guys are on, maybe I'll jump on. Uh, but I don't know if I'll be streaming it. Okay, so let's talk about the uh, the last thing I want to talk about that's on my list here. I'm going to leave these links open because I want to copy and paste them into the description. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, we're going to talk scum. So first off, you guys saw this, right? Can I make this bigger? Yeah. You guys already saw this. This is the, uh, the scum coins that are they're coming out. They're like, uh, we're proud to present the concept of art for scum quest coins, a big part of the already announced mission system planned for 1.0 release. So they made these, uh, these, these coins for the scum game, and they're calling them quest coins. Now, I know I've got about a 30, I, I don't know, I've got like a 30 second delay or a 20 second delay. So you guys, I'll be talking and uh, you won't get this for another 30 seconds, but that's okay. Just join in this conversation. If my flight gets delayed, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be salty. Oh no. Okay, so anyways, they made these coins and they're calling them the quest coins. And a lot of people were trying to figure out how what what the what are they for? How are they gonna work out? I mean, is this like you have to look for these quests or are these gonna be rewards that you get when you do a quest? Uh, and this is a quest system or a mission system that they're putting into the game uh, on its full release, its 1.0 release that's supposedly going to be this year. That's what they're pushing for. So we're going to see if that happens. Now, I had, uh, I had put a post because I was not sure what it meant. A lot of people were asking also, and I think my post is down here somewhere. It's not too far. And I said, basically, my guess, the coins are the quest, perhaps locate all the coins, uh, as a uh, as a collection for a quest reward, or you get one of the coins for each component. Oh, I'm sorry, for each completed quest. Then the collection of all the quest coins is is going to be an achievement or a bigger reward. That was what I said. And when I looked, the scum game developers or the people in charge of that Twitter actually liked my comment. So I must be in the realm of what that actually is going to, to do, what these quest coins are for. So I'm guessing I'm close to what it is. So I went ahead and looked up a video. I got two videos here. And I've got one related to quest from, from um, our friend Ray Kit. But this one has more to do with talking about the PVE and the NPC stuff and, and all that stuff, he very doesn't really touch too much on the quests, other than that they're working on a quest design. So they've been working on, this is about three weeks ago, so they have been working on a quest design. But he put out a video on the quest coins, and I'm curious to know what he says about the quest coins. Because as we know, sometimes... Mr. Kit gets the uh, inside scoop, you know, because of all this flattery to the game. So let's see what happens here. Mission's going to be playing Miss Pac-Man. Nice. All right, so let's see what he says. I'm curious to know if he, if he knows anything about this. Um, right, okay, this is going to be a very short video, and this is more going to be, there's going to be more attention here in the comments section down below. What do you guys think of this? So today, Brinks Nemesis have posted something out. They haven't posted anything like this for a long time. Obviously, yes, we had a patch the other day. Which... By the way, this guy, he, t you know, like, I, I talk a lot, and I talk fast sometimes, but I tend to stop in between, like, sentences, at least I try to. This is like completely run on. So um, anyways, let me stop for a second. Uh, let's talk about the artwork first. I think the coins look really good. And there's a couple of assumptions that I can make before I can even, before I even listen to what he's saying. And like, for example, if these are tokens that you get 
by the way, I think this is front and back. This has got to be like front and back, right? Because this is the front, this is the back. This is the front, this is the back. Same thing here. Front, back, front, back. Front, back, front, back. Okay. I think they did a good job with the, uh, with the numbers like 1, 5, 20, 50, 10, and 2. And the actual images behind these. There's a couple here that look kind of eh. Uh, like, I don't, I mean, I'm guessing those are leaves behind the one and these are leaves behind the two. So those are a little crappy. But when it comes to like these grapes, they did a good job here. This looks really good for a coin. The corn, the corn on the cob here looks really good on the coin. Um, then whoever made these gold ones, again, they did a good job with the five and the, the reef around. But again, they use the same artwork in the background that looks like they're supposed to be leaves, but they look kind of messed up. So they don't look that great. I think they could have done a little better, especially when you look at like the grapes here, which they got a lot of detail on these leaves. Those leaves look really bad. So it is what it is. Also, this one here for the 10, the back of the 10, that looks like crap. I don't know what the hell. Is that a weed? What the hell is that? So that that's kind of crappy there. This maple leaf, it could have had a better detail. Again, I think this was half-assed, but maybe they're still working on it. These backgrounds are good. The bottom, the back of the 50, the back of the 20, those look good. Again, I think they should get rid of this freaking, whatever leaf they're using behind the numbers, they need to get rid of it. Just get rid of it and replace it with maybe the, the grape leaves or even this freaking leaf right here. That one might be okay. But that, whatever it is they're using behind the numbers looks like crap. Okay, let's move on to these on the side here. These, they did a lot. Whoever did these did a lot better. They took their time. They look good. I think if these were to be given as a reward for a quest or for doing some kind of an achievement or something, I would think that the, the three that are on the right-hand side here, one, two, and five, with a little mongoose or ferret or whatever the hell that is. I think these rewards would be in regards to hunting, fishing, and you know, the birds would probably be hunting as well. Who knows? But that's what I think it's those would be. Because look at this one has a fish, this one has a freaking bear, this one has some birds. I don't know. I haven't seen a lot of birds in the game right now, so maybe that's not true. But I would think that these would be hunting related or fishing related. I could be completely wrong. But if you're going to do something like this, I would say that would be a good idea to do that. So we don't know. I'm making assumptions right now without even watching this video. But yeah, they have to remove that. Whatever background image they're using there for leaves is, is screwed up. Okay, guys, I'm off. All right, have a safe, a safe flight. Hide is taking off. She's going to work now. They look a lot like actual Croatian currency. Yeah, I don't know. I'd have to look at Croatian currency. I've never seen it. Be back in a week. All right, we'll be here. All right. So anyways, we'll have to look at Croatian coins in a second. Let's see the rest of this video. It's going to be a quick one. It's like four minutes. About the squad probation and offline base raiding. We have a ton of features for each of those two, which is in a separate video that I will link at the end of this video. So let's have a look here. So we've got the scum quest coins. By the way, he was talking about the the off uh, offline rating protection, all that. It's it's part of another video and it's part of the patch that came out recently. It's not something that, that I'm into, so I'm not talking about that. Sorry about it. Guys, it's happening. So look, listen, they are working alongside Jagex. Now, Jagex are the masters of quests. They really and truly are. I mean, they've been doing this since before most other games right now. Let's face it. Jagex have been doing this for a very long time and they will be a part of this and probably helping game players alongside in making this something that's going to be, you know, that's going to have some longevity, especially to the quest stuff. Now they have quest coins here. Now let's have a quick look and you can see at the top left of there, we've got one um, and then we've got some items and stuff that you can find around the game, like some of the flowers, you know, um, the olives, you can see corn, you can see birds, you can see a weasel, is that a weasel or an otter or something like that? You've got the bear, the fish, and stuff like this. So there is different types of coins. You can see the little coins on the left, and on the right, you can see the big coin. Right? But you do have a 50 there, Dan. I don't know what this is. I have no idea, guys. And you can have the different color coins there, which is the, the bronze-looking coins as well. 
this is obviously a horrendously first iteration. And when I mean horrendously, I just mean like this is the very beginning of... Yeah, if this is the first iteration of these coins, they did a great job. I'm not going to... I'm not bashing the art style and what they've done. I think they've done a... I mean, they look really good. I, I like this kind of like stuff like this when they make coins in art. I, I think it's, it's a cool thing. They did a great job. Um, but if it's a first iteration, yes, hopefully they're going to be tying, you know, cleaning it up a little bit. Um, they can, I understand they put scum at the top of it, like to make it because it's part of the game. But I honestly don't think it needs to even say scum. Like, what is the island called? I forgot what the island is called, but the island must have a name. If the island has a name, I would suggest putting like the name up there. I don't think it needs to even say scum on it. Like, I would take that out. All right, well, let's see. I don't know if he's even going to talk about what they're actually for, if he's going to make his assumptions. I've made mine. Um, any iteration with this, clearly. But they're going with something with quest coins. So I don't know how this is going to work out. What do you guys think? Please let me know. And please let me know what you would like to see these uh, do as well, or how these are. Do we have to go out and collect these that in turn will give us um, same points when we get back to the trader? Because personally, with these quest coins, I honestly think that this is now going to change the way the whole traders are. Because now that we've got the quest stuff, what are we going to get in return? What are we going to get? I don't see how, I don't, I don't understand why it's saying it's going to change the way traders work. I mean, we have money now. It's got to, this has got to be a collection that you're going to find, or it's going to be rewards for certain achievements. It's got to be that. I mean, it can't be like just money. It would be, this is, this is a waste of art if it's just for money you be used as a like a transaction like trader money return for these quests unless unless they're going to be worth a lot more like let's say a gold five would probably be now I'm, I'm making this up by the way like let's say if the five is worth this gold five here would be worth a uh, thousand you know a thousand scum bucks i don't know the name of the island? Yeah, there you go. Mine. Yeah, so something like that or Tech One, exactly. I can't say that. Bag Bagna de Cayenne, de Cayenne, Cayenne. <laughs> That's Cayenne. I can never say that word right. And considering we have the coins here, we can save these up. We can use them for different things. We can use them at vendors. No, uh, maybe getting. I I don't think they're going to be used for vendors. I don't know. I just can't see that just being used for vendor for vendor shit. Unless it's like if you find one of these and then you turn it in, each one of these is for a quest. Like you turn it in and they give you a quest. Maybe. Let's have a picture of a pepper. <laughs> nice. Perhaps they will have a new trader NPC, a quest trader that has specific inventory, not in other traders. Yeah, but then that would be like you would have what's up, Wrath, by the way? Nice to see you, man. Um, but I'm guessing if you do that, what other special items are you going to have set up specific that you don't know about now? I don't know, man. Are we going to see what people, there's got to be comments underneath this. Let's get through the rest of this. Obviously he's not giving his thoughts. Edun or whatever, you know, different things. But personally, I think obviously, um, or fame points, uh, would definitely be something that, uh, we'd like to get. Fame points are useless except for. Being able to purchase, like, depending on what level things are set at. So I don't know if this would be, this would be transactional towards uh, fame points. And what would be the, what would be the, like, why would you do that? Let's see. From here. This is definitely something that's going to push this game into the next level. And, you know, we are... I hate, I hate, hate, hate when he says that. When he has no clue what this is for. This is definitely going to be something. Let me say that. Yeah, yeah, I think this is going to be something that's definitely going to send it to the next level. Whatever, I can't do his accent right now. I'm too tired. 
how they, how can you say this is going to push the game to the next level if you don't even know what this is for? The idea and the possibilities of what you can do with this can possibly make this a game changer, assuming that the idea and the use of it is something like, wow, we did not even see that coming. Excuse me a second while I stop my camera from moving. Stop. Thank you. Okay, there we go. Uh, it, it looks at every time I raise my hand up, it thinks I want it to move. And that's the thing. It's like, this, this is going to be, yeah. And, you know, we are still waiting for the best parts of this game. The missions, the quests, the next level. And, you know, we this definitely step. something that's going to push this game into the next level. And I, I don't see how you can say that. I'm sorry. It really drives me nuts you can say that it's going to push the game to the next level when you have no idea what this is actually for he said that about hordes yeah he's he says that a lot that's the thing man it, it drives me nuts that's the one thing don't don't just say shit give your thoughts what do you think it's for what do you think it's for what would be great maybe give some ideas like like that's what that's why i posted that to the freaking devs my guess is the coins, the coins are quests. Perhaps locate all the coins as a collection for a large quest reward, or you get one of the coins for each completed quest, and then the collection of all the quest coins is an achievement or a big reward. So I'm giving I'm I'm making an assumption of what my guess is that this is for to give some feedback that maybe they're still working on it and maybe that will help. But I'm not saying this is some next level shit, bro, right here. We have no idea what this is for, but it's some next level shit. Why? That's such a stupid thing to say. I'm sorry. That's, that's the thing. It's like, I want to hear, when I watch a video, and I enjoy watching Ray Kid's videos sometimes. Uh, and I've, in the past, I've learned from the how-to videos, like early, early scum days for me. But when I watch a video and you're going to put something up there and talk about scum quest coins and say that, hey, they put these out. Give your opinions on what you think is going to happen or what you would like to see happen with these. Then people can say, what do you guys think? Not just, just, just say, this is some next level shit here. It just drives me nuts when he does stuff like this. I would love to just hear his, what are your thoughts, man? What do you think this is going to be? What do you think they should do with this? That's what I want to see the video on, right? You know, we are still waiting for the best parts of this game. The missions, the quests, the NPCs, um, the AI. These, these are the big things of this game. And they have said since day one, guys, over five years ago, when I did their very first Q&A for game players and have continued to do so throughout the years, the first one they were saying all about uh, quests and NPCs coming towards the end. You know, this is all going to be 1.0 stuff. And even then, after 1.0, it's still going to be um, worked on and developed as well. Jagex are a huge deal. Game players are also about to become a very huge deal. Mm. That is why I'm absolutely honored to sort of be alongside them in their journey uh, with this. This is absolutely amazing. I'm so excited. But I'm not going to sit here and waffle on and pretend I know what I'm talking about. I don't know how these are going to work, and they don't know. Either. They just said we will know more with 1.0. There, there's nothing. See, I understand what he's saying. It's like, he's not going to waffle around to pretend to know what they are. I'm not asking him to pretend to know what they're for. I want, I really would just like to hear him say what I think they could be used for. And what would be really cool is if they use them for this, because maybe the, maybe the devs don't even have that sorted out yet. And I love, oh yes, Brink, I have to, I was going to read that, alongside of them on this journey, like he is a part of the studio. Yeah, and that's the other thing. I'm glad that I'm alongside of them with this. Like, what does that mean? Does he have, like, is, is he invest, did he invest money in Jagex or something? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that's kind of mean for me to say, but, oh no, I'm like, I'm trying to understand that comment too, but okay. Anyways. All right, so I guess he's not giving us his feedback. He's it would be wrong of him to tell us what he thinks, I guess. Just I don't know. Something to take out, guys. This is what it, what do you think? Please let me know. Okay. So what do, what do the Ray Kid army think? Let's see. Uh, let me just go down here. I, I love doing this. I just, this is, this is, um, 
behind the scenes let's see quest coins interesting concept don't you think what do you think of this it's too early for me to have an opinion on the coins i'll have to wait and see how they're implemented maybe the npcs you kill during the new quest drop the coins which you can choose to either return them to the boss for fame points or save the coins for certain cosmetics or other special upgrades see that's a nice that's that's a good comment i like that one this uh random user i don't know who the user is but okay but that's a that's a good idea i like that okay those coins are croatian old money we are now using euros all right so now we know what they look like uh looking forward to see how this gets implemented in the game as a loot goblin and achievement hunter they are interesting but they might be more than that okay it's achievement hunter so he was loved to be if it's an achievement very interesting 1.0 is going to be one hell of an update it kind of looks like rogue otter on some of the coins mm, not okay uh those coins are based on the croatian currency before adopting euro they have the same denomination and the same motif of them uh okay yeah that's right well we already know that all i want is missions to get here recently started playing stalker and it's really made it clear how how much small things like missions and radio comms can make the world so much more alive very true uh let's see what else what else what else hold on there's a couple things i was making quests back in 2019 i even sent them sent them to someone so i guess they made quests to send them and nothing happened yeah there's not, so nobody's really saying a lot everyone's like just excited about the coins <laughs> yeah so that's that's what that is there you go so they got coins nobody really knows what they're going to be for no one's really saying what they'd like to see but it is what it is uh at some point or another we're going to be seeing we're going to be seeing these coins come into the game uh there's a lot of talk about 1.0 what it's going to have npcs missions you know and all this other stuff but truthfully i'm 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 waiting i'm skeptical i'm waiting to see what's going to happen uh just to look at these past what the past week i think we've seen like three hot fixes come out so they're definitely working on fixing stuff but there's still a lot of stuff to be done and it's great that they have these quest coins and whatnot but um, really, I'm, look, I'm looking forward to seeing what's going to happen. I'm not going to say it's next level shit. I'm just going to say that this is stuff that really needs to be in the game in order for the game to have a purpose, is the quest. Now, having said that, let me see if I can. Can I bring this up? Hold on a second. I'm going to put this over here for a second. Uh, where is the Steam? You guys know like when you buy a game, it has a folder. Oh, crap. Where did I put that? Hold on one second. So here's where I got to do this here. What really scares me is about direction on where this game is going. Is it properties? Oh, there it is. I found it. Okay. So when there's this, there's these extras here. And I, I talked about this the other day. At the, I don't know if I did this on stream or not, but what they have is they have these, um, on the Steam install of the game, there's these extras, okay? So you look at the extras, there is some promotional stuff, some promotional screenshots. Like, you know, if you did this, they've got some, you know, the basically the files, right? But they also have like the mini game design document and if you click on that, it should open up. Let's see, it takes a moment. And so, see if I can make this big. So they have like the, the game document. Oh, I don't care about that right now. And it kind of runs through the actual game itself and like what the storyline is and anything like that. So it's pretty interesting to see this. Um, you can read through all of this stuff, but basically this is kind of the idea behind the game, right? Now, my question is, when they're finishing up 1.0 and they're releasing it as a full version, 
are they going to take any of this stuff as as like what they're going to use here's another one like this is the uh the comic put this up here yeah this is the comic if you like wanted to read the comic book this is kind of like uh the guy gets gets arrested they send them away you can go through the whole thing on your own there's all these mutations in here so obviously they're getting sent to the island and you can go through this entire comic but basically they're like they're putting the bcu in the back of him and there's story we're not going to read all of this but go through it and somebody who the guy that runs tech one is obviously going to send him away and we should get to the end here and here's the end he gets dropped let's see if i can go back a little bit oh well they throw him down he gets there he sees some guy he beats him up he takes his stuff it's basically raiding so the whole reason i'm showing you this is because this is part of the game when you first bought it. When I first bought it with the support pack, it comes with this information. And I always wondered is if they were going to do anything with that stuff. They even have a movie script. And so I don't, I just, I don't think anybody knows at this point what kind of, what the storyline is for version 1.0. And who, and I don't know if it follows. I def no, no, no. Let me, let me phrase that. I'm pretty sure it does not follow the original story. Like this was a, this was a movie script and it's in here too. And they have like the whole little backstory, synops, characters, screen, and all this stuff. Here's the reality TV part with Tech One. Do that. So I'm assuming that it's not going to be anything to do with this. They had a plan. They had a good plan. Just don't know what happened to it. I have no idea. There was even posters in here. Look, see, there was a poster for a movie or a show or something, which would have been really cool. Anyways. It's just an art concept that they, they may never even get implemented. Very possible. Of course, they copied the coins. We know from their trailers they come... They can't come up with anything original. Nice. Yeah, back when they had a plan. So there was even like, they had big ideas for this game, but who knows? I mean, look at the guy. There's, see the guy with the, uh, the guy with the suit? That's the Tech One leader right there. There's the Tech One guys. Now they did stay. Look, if you stay, if you look at this close up, you see these guys here? That looks a lot like the stuff that they were doing. Where is that video? go back look looks similar right where is it where is it where is it looks kind of similar and this is way back in the day so they did they did keep some things Those are going to be the bunker people. These guys are the, are the ones and the, you know, the players. This girl and this guy here are the main, like, people of Tech One. The ones that run Tech One. Obviously, we don't have these. Well, we still have these mechs, but they don't look like that anymore. We have new ones. Um, this is the biohazard people. I'm sure at some or another, they need to incorporate these people. But that's the idea. I mean, they had an idea. I just don't know if they're going to follow it. It'll be interesting to see. Super camera. Look, it's moving. Nice. Anyhow. All right, that's all I got today. <laughs> I really wanted to, uh, to go over some of this stuff. So it turns out, just to summarize, I'm going to wait for Dragon Dogma 2 to go down on a sale price. I'm going to wait for uh, Rise of Ronin, of the Ronin, to go down to a sale price as well. Not something that I think I'm paying full price for. 
I'm I'm gonna go back to playing Ghost of Tsushima because it still looks great, and I can't wait till it's released on PC uh, in May. I'll definitely be playing it then. That's gonna be good stuff. So what do we got this week? Well, this week we've got um Final Ep oh no Final the last Epoch Epoch. I always say that wrong. We got to try that game out because I do have it and I want to try it out. If I can install Ghost of Tsushima on my PlayStation and get that ready, I want to play that this week. Uh, we will probably try to venture into Conan unless I play that offline. And that's kind of what's going on. And um, I've got a lot of uh, print-on-demand work I have to do this week as well. So I'm going to try to stick to my regular schedule of two streams. And maybe throw in a third one. So it'd be Monday and Friday and see if I can th fit one in either Wednesday or Thursday. But um, for sure, I got to do Monday and Friday. There'll be Let's Play. There's not going to be coffee chats because we haven't played games in a while. But we'll definitely talk while we're doing it. It's like a Let's Play uh, podcast style stream. I think that's what we're going to do. And now I've got to go make tacos. <laughs> because people are hungry. All right, guys, listen, I hope you're enjoying your Sunday. I just want to get on here, spend a little time with you, uh, kind of give you my thoughts on these games and, and really see if this was something I was going to play. Uh, I hope that Scum gets its act together and we get something good on version 1.0. But as it stands right now, I'm still not, still not feeling the call to go and play it. I'm really not. Can I do this? Oh, look at this. Hey, terrible. Um, I'm really not feeling the call to actually play it at this time, but we'll see. If anything changes, I will let you know. All right, guys, have a great afternoon, a great evening, because it is already 6.56 p.m. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. I will see you tomorrow morning, and we will get through, uh, get through a Let's Play. I'm not sure what I'll be playing, but I'm sure it'll be something, something fun. So until then, have a great night. I'll see you soon. Take care, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me. I'm out. Peace.